Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks all for, for coming. So I'll try to keep it short, but just to uh, finish by, uh, by 12. Yeah, so, the, so this is mostly what a, a summary of work I've been uh, doing for the last uh, 10 years, or a little bit more. So it's, uh, I would like to acknowledge financial support from the uh, European Commission through uh, three micro fellowships. Two were at uh, Imperial, and one was in uh, Koch University in Istanbul, and more recently, uh, at Caltech, then uh, Johns Hopkins through uh, Air Force and uh, Department of Energy Funding. So yeah, so this is work with a lot of people, uh, among them Mathieu Darcy and uh, Zhang Chen Li, who are in the in the audience. Uh, so, <coughs> so I'll probably skip the first thing about the kernel methods. I'll focus on kernel flows. On the, so similar question to Hei Lu or on how to choose the, to learn the kernel from data. So I'll talk about parameter kernel flows non parametric kernel flows, irregular time series, uh, partial observations, and uh, sparse kernel flows. Uh, so I'll talk also about detection of uh, critical transitions for some slow fast SDEs uh, using uh, the maximum discrepancy and uh, an extended uh, kernel uh, mode decomposition. Uh, and then center manifolds and the opponent functions if I have time, and I'll probably skip the last, uh, last part. Uh, so yeah, so the approach is as follows. <coughs> so we assume that there <coughs> there is a fee from Rn into H where uh, that allows us to map the dynamical system to a uh, higher, higher dimensional space uh, and eventually uh, infinite dimensional one where we perform an analysis uh, in general linear but not, not necessarily uh, linear and then we can conclude about the, about the dynamics in, uh, in Rn and the fee is obtained from the kernel that defines the RKHS and essentially we are building a Hilbert space uh, from the data where the computations become, uh, become simpler. Uh, so the historical context of uh, kernel methods appeared in the 30s as an answer on when, of, when is it possible to embed uh, a metric space into a Hilbert space. Uh, and uh, there have been an answer that was given by Schoenberg that if the metric satisfies certain conditions, it's possible to embed uh, a metric space into a special kind of Hilbert space is called RKHS. Uh, there have been a lot of studies uh, in the 50s uh, and then in the 60s by Aronjan and the Schwartz, etc. But then he died a little bit and then they were resurrected uh, in the 90s by Wahba and then uh, and Smail in the early 2000s. <coughs> so I'm going to skip all this because I'm sure that everyone here knows the, all these things. Uh, yeah, okay, so the question here is the, oops. Right. Okay, so the wrong direction. Am I going the right direction? Or... Yeah, they're going. Okay, sorry, I'm going the wrong. Oh, then what's happening? Wait. There's something wrong going on. Yeah, okay, nice come yeah. I'm just going to use the thing here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the, yeah, so here the question is, uh, given input output data, and we would like to recover an unknown function, uh, u star, uh, such that u star xi is equal to yi. And in the setting of uh, optimal recovery, the problem can be turned into well pause problem uh, by restricting uh, candidates for, uh, for u star into particular kind of Banach spaces with the following norm. And the optimal recovery problem in that case is given by this following uh, min max problem. And uh, yeah, so the premise here is that uh, kernel is good if there is no significant uh, loss in accuracy if half of the data is, is used. And so this led to the introduction of this relative error. Rho is the norm of V star minus uh, Vs square over the norm of V star square. So V star is the, the recovery of uh, of u star based on the full, uh, on the full number of uh, data points, and then v s is the is the is the is the interpolant when we are using half of the of the data. Uh, and so in that case, in order to find if you have a kernel uh, with with certain parameters, so the in order to find the the, the parameters, so one uh, takes a random subsample of the of the full data set, and uh, then computes the the relative error. And then we uh, evolve theta in the gradient descent direction of, of rho. So we'll update the parameters of the, of the kernel uh, through the gradient descent. I mean, that's the, what's called parametric kernel flows. 
so then we applied this and extended it to the case of, uh, of dynamics. <coughs> so we assume that we have a time series x1 to, to xa, and our goal is to forecast uh, xn plus, plus 1 based on the observation x1 to xn. And so we work on the, under the assumption that this time series can be approximated by the solution of a dynamical system of the following form. So here we assume that we don't now uh, uh, thought dagger, which is the time delay, but it can be covered uh, using a data-based approach. Uh, and so uh, we, uh, yeah, so we use this approach and then we, uh, we uh, apply it. So we just view this problem as a regression problem where we are learning the, the kernel through uh, kernel flows. And since we are dealing with dynamics, so we are, uh, like a regression approach is not necessarily uh, the best one. So we uh, extend uh, kernel flows to different uh, uh, versions. So one of them is to, to consider uh, Lyapunov exponents because we are also interested in, uh, in long-term behavior. So here we'll define a kernel as, um, as good if the estimate of the maximal Lyapunov exponent obtained from the kernel approximation of the dy dynamics does not uh, change much if half of the data is used. But you can also use it with different uh, uh, other Lyapunov uh, exponents, not, not necessarily only the, the maximal one. And the other uh, approach uh, <coughs> to, <coughs> to use kernel flows is to use, uh, to use the, the metric uh, based on the, on the maximum mean discrepancy, where we are looking for uh, different subsamples of the time series, and then we, uh, we update the parameters of the kernel by minimizing the, the MMD. So we, uh, yeah, so we started looking at this uh, kernel by, uh, so we had some toy models in dynamical system like Lorenz and Hanon and uh, logistic map and Bernoulli. So we, uh, we used this kernel, which is like, uh, I think 11 parameters. Uh, so for Bernoulli, uh, so, the <coughs> <coughs> so the three versions of kernel flows uh, work well. So here is uh, the right hand side. Okay, okay, so this is without learning the kernels for different initial conditions. This is with uh, learning the kernel. And same here for different uh, initial condition. Uh, red is, uh, oh, sorry, blue is true, and red is with kernel flows, and green is uh, without learning the kernel. Uh, for Lorentz, uh, same thing. We use the same, uh, same kernel, and we also got uh, good uh, results uh, for the x, y, and z components. Uh, and these are the, the errors for x, uh, y, and, uh, and z components. And same thing for the reconstruction of the attractor. So this is the attractor uh, after learning the kernel, so the projections on the x, y, x, z, and y, z axis. So this is uh, after learning the kernel, and this is before uh, learning the kernel. And same, this is for the 3D uh, projection. Uh, so then we, and then we, when we got this first paper, uh, someone from, uh, from Itmoli from uh, Argo National Lab approach us with the real data that they are using in, the, in their lab. So we used the, the method of kernel flows with a slightly bigger kernel with the 20, I think 21 parameters. So they are using PDE methods for this forecasting. So, and then they are using them to on supercomputers. So for there, they use like, a deep, like LSTM methods and some neural network Methods. I mean, these are like the training times on their uh, on their machines, and then using kernel flows, we got uh, so we, with the kernel that I that was built actually on the toy models. So it took like 40 seconds to train on uh, on simple uh, machine. So these are like the forecasting uh, uh, using uh, the different methods. So the blue is kernel flows, orange is high com, and then green is CSM, and then red is the, is the true one. So that's for the uh, temperature profile, and these are like the, the global uh, profile as well. So this is true, this is kernel flows, and this is high comps and CSEM. So I'm not sure if this is the same data set that, that Ed Ott was talking about, but you see we also recover the answer cycle here. Uh, yeah, then uh, now the second version is uh, non-parameter kernel flows where we are not properly learning the, the parameters of the kernel, but we are like uh, deforming uh, the, the coordinates of the system. Sorry, we are deforming the data. So here we assume that we have a, a kernel k phi x x prime, uh, which writes as k phi x phi x prime, and then the goal is to, uh, to wrap the, the kernel, so changing the, the phi in such a way that we learn the dynamics. 
So here, the, the, the warping that we are doing is uh, through a dynamical system given by basically an ODE uh, that we'll uh, discretize later on to find the, the warping. And then uh, this is how the, the kernel is, is happening, is, uh, is obtained. So the, at each iteration, we find the phi, and then we, uh, we modify the, the k accordingly. Uh, so that's the discretization to get the, the warping of the, of the kernel. <coughs> Uh, so this is, for example, for the for the Bernoulli map. Uh, so here we tried actually uh, two things. One is the, the relative error given by the, uh, the the original one, and this is by through the MMD. So this is the Bernoulli with the yeah, red is uh, true, and then blue with uh, with kind of flaws, original row, and then this one is with uh, with MMD. And uh, so this is the warping. So this is like first, uh, the original is the blue, so it's, it's linear, and then after yeah, many iterations, it's 500,000. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the issues with the kind of non parameters is that it takes a lot of time to, to train. So this is the, the deformation, and this is how the dynamic is happen, uh, becomes after the warping. And this is like the dynamics of the, of the loss, so the original loss versus the MMD loss. I mean, it's, uh, it seems that the MMD loss is, uh, has better convergence properties than the, the original loss. Uh, another problem is uh, when we are dealing with uh, irreg irregularly sampled time series. So I think uh, you heard like Edouard de Brou, he was talking about like healthcare uh, problems where we are not, we don't have uh, regular sampling in, uh, for data coming from, uh, from healthcare, for example. So here we'll, uh, we'll be uh, using an approximation of the dynamics, but we'll include the time difference in, in the approximate. So we'll, it will be embedded. So we have, instead of having, before it was delta k was fixed, so we didn't have the delta k instead of the approximate. Now we'll have the delta k included in the, in the F dagger. Uh, and so we use the kernel flows and, the, uh, and learn the parameters accordingly. Uh, so that's, for example, the example for the Lorentz uh, system when we are doing irregular sampling. Uh, so that's the, it's not working properly. But then through, uh, when we apply this method where we are losing, using, the, where, actually using the information about the, the time differences, then the results uh, improve. That's, for example, what happens with, uh, with, uh, with Lorentz. So the left is like the regular kind of flows of the normal, uh, the normal version. And then when we include the, the time differences in the algorithm, we, have, uh, we see improvement in, in the prediction. Uh, and same for the attractor. So this is the left one with the regular kind of flows where we are not including the time differences. And then this is when we include the, the time differences. Uh, then now like another issue is when we are dealing with <coughs> partially observed dynamical systems. So we have dynamical system in Rn, in Rn plus M, sorry. And then we assume that we now uh, N components of the state and then we don't now M components. Uh, and so what we are going to do here, I mean, we saw the approximation that we are using is based on the presenter theorem, so the goal is to find an estimate of the missing variables in the presenter theorem. Uh, and so we are going to just uh, solve the following, following the optimization problem. So there is a, yeah, so there's a two missing, I think the, it went over, over space. So yeah, so here we int introduce uh, some auxiliary variables that we, are, uh, that we need to minimize uh, for, and this will allow us to write down the, the presenter theorem for the dynamics. So this would be uh, like the approximation of the first part of the dynamics, Fn. Second part is Fm, uh, se third, uh, second part of the dynamics. And uh, yeah, C, which is the concatenation of the observables. Uh, and so this leads to this optimization problem with respect to A, which is again the, the missing part in the presenter theorem. Uh, so then for Lorentz, uh, this is, uh, so we, we, we deal with Lorentz. And then we deal with the, like a lo the, like long, this 22 uh, par parameters uh, kernel that we use for the same, uh, for the climate uh, modeling uh, problem. So the steps as we find the auxiliary variable, the ZA. So here we assume, so we had like two cases. I'm just going to talk about the first one. So we assume that uh, we observe X, Y, but not Z. And then the second one is uh, we, uh, we observe X, but we don't observe Y, Z. So if we, don't if, we if we don't observe Z only, then the question will be to find the auxiliary variable uh, ZA, and then use kind of flows to learn the parameters of the, of the kernel. 
yeah, so then here we generate data and then we have different in, uh, well, for a zero initial condition. And then we solve the optimization problem. So one of the issues is that it's very slow uh, in convergence because uh, lar slightly large uh, sample sizes that leads to, uh, yeah, to uh, divergence in the, in the algorithm. So we hear it, the, the step size to find the auxiliary variable was uh, quite small, 10 to the power minus seven. So even 10 minus six were, was diverging. So it took like several, uh, I think two days to just get the auxiliary variable. So there's, and then also for prediction, we used, uh, we started using uh, a time delay of three, which was the, what we used for the regular kernel flows with the, where the, all the variables were known, but it didn't work. So just by just increasing the time delay uh, to four, then the results improved. And uh, yeah, so this is what we got for the different variables, X, Y, and Z. Uh, and uh, these are the errors. I mean, this is like, yeah, this is, a, oops, so it's the other, wait. Yeah, so here it was the prediction of uh, over a thousand of, uh, sorry, interval of 1,000. Uh, these are the error over uh, 5,000 uh, time steps. And then this is the attractor. So uh, blue is true and red is the approximation. And uh, yeah, another thing about uh, yeah, uh, learning kernel flow, uh, learning uh, kernels from, from data is that sometimes, I mean, uh, one of the issues is to which kernel you choose. I mean, what, 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 is, start, what is the starting point? One thing was about like using non-parameter kernel flows was to use the Gaussian kernel, which is like universal kernel, and then do the, the deformation of the state space. But that's uh, quite slow. Another approach, more, more direct, which is take a dictionary of, of kernels and then, uh, like, uh, and then use uh, uh, L, L1 uh, parameterization to try to, to zero some of the coefficients. And then we applied it to a database of 131 chaotic dynamical systems that was proposed in a paper uh, in, in NeurIPS, I think about a year or two years ago. Uh, and then the method quite worked uh, quite well. So it uh, performed that very well for about 129 over 131 uh, for the kernel that I'm going to show. But then two other ones didn't work well. It probably needs the, just need to, to improve the, the kernel. So that's the kernel uh, we use. It's mostly, it's mostly using uh, different things like Gaussian, Laplace, and the locally periodic kernel and different uh, combinations. Uh, so for that one, so here we just have uh, two examples. Uh, so this is one of the examples that he had in the, in the, in, in the database. Uh, so here are the attractors. So the here, when with lambda is equal to zero, so the basically no no lasso uh, uh, penalty. Uh, so the the true attractor is uh, blue and prediction is red, and then with the with the with the penalty on the on the coefficients, we get better better results, and that's another example that was on the database. <coughs> And uh, so these are the attractors. So basically, lambda is equal to zero corresponds to regular kind of flows. So here, the true attractor is blue, and then the approximation is red. And then we're using the penalty on the beta coefficients. Lambda is equal to two. We get uh, improvement in the results. Uh, that's a table that just summarizes the results for these uh, two things. And we have the SME, um, and then also the Hausdorff distance between the true attractor and the approximation. And we see it decreasing between regular kind of flows and, uh, and sparse kind of flows. So that's about learning uh, dynamics. And the second, uh, oh, sorry, there's another one. So, the, so here now we are going to deal with uh, learning SDEs and, uh, yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah, here we are learning the, the right-hand side of the ODE, yeah. So are you doing numerical differentiation, for example, the way Faye mentioned, or uh, something else to infer the right-hand side? Yeah, so the way, I mean, yes, the right-hand side, oops, sorry, it's going always the wrong direction. Yeah, so the, the right-hand side is based on this kind of kernels. So basically, I, uh, the way I, uh, we approach is that we look at toy models. It was more of an inductive argument where we look at different toy models that appear in dynamical systems, uh, like uh, logistic, uh, sorry, Bernoulli, logistic, Hanon, and Lorentz. And then the goal is to try to find the kernel for each uh, little toy model. And then 
So the, the approach is that, okay, for more complicated uh, system, then you just have to, to sum them up. Uh, so yeah, so we came up with this big kernel that is, seems to be working when, yeah, as I said, I mean, for this database of uh, 131 uh, time series, I mean, so basically we are just looking for a dictionary, uh, elements of the dictionary that allows to deal with a very large uh, the, uh, the number of, uh, of chaotic systems. Yeah. Got it, thanks. Yeah. So how, how do you do the inference of both the coefficients and the, I mean, the, I know that the hyperparameters is from this flow part, but does everything go into the kernel flow? Just how do you do the inference? Yeah, yeah, everything goes into the kernel flow, yeah. So, okay, yeah, so all the parameters, and even the, yeah, so all the parameters of the, of the kernel are in the, in the kernel flow algorithm, yeah. Okay, and then initial conditions, are those in the kernel flow or no? No, no, initial conditions are different. Okay. Yeah, so they are not in the kernel flow. Yeah. So we start with one initial condition, and then we infer with different initial conditions, yeah. So, so this is what I was sharing in the other, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, slightly different uh, initial condition. They are not exactly the same, yeah. And so it's very hard to learn initial conditions with SGD, that, that's what you're finding. Yeah, 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 so this is, yeah, this is okay. definitely, so yeah. This yeah. is kind of what I, I was seeing as well, so this makes sense. Yeah, Thanks. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this, uh, this multitask aspect of it where you have a database of small problems. So, um, well, you, you said you have some kind of a larger problems which are then constructed to a sum of the, um, of little pieces you've learned from smaller problems? Yeah, yeah so that's, yeah, that, that, I mean, this is the, the large the kernel for the large problem. So the, the climate modeling uh, problem, we use this kernel, which is like 25. I, mean, I think it was like even less, I mean, I think it was 21 parameters. There were, there were some elements that were not present in the, in the original kernel, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, for the, this large, that, for the, kernel, the, origin, the climate modeling, the Argo National Lab data set, yeah, so we used something similar to that one, yeah. As I said, the key, as I said, like, uh, the, the way I approached it was to look at different dynamic phenomena and find the toy, toy models corresponding to them and then learn the, the dynamics. And then the goal was, given that I have enough toy models, and then if I learn them well enough, then I'll just like, sum the, all the kernels. And then this would be a good kernel for more complex systems. And then it turned out to be right, so it works out for that, for that good data. data. And it even worked for the 131 chaotic uh, uh, dynamics uh, uh, database, yeah. So as I said, it worked for 129, but there are two that we still need to crack, probably by just adding extra terms, yeah. So um, I just have this question, like all kernels, are like all of these values individually are also dependent on distances, and so distances suffer from curse of dimensionality. So how, how did you overcome that? Like since uh, like you just said 151 dimensional system, right? No, it was 131 uh, database. This is a database of 131 chaotic dynamics, but they were all small. Yeah, for the, yeah, for the curse of dimensionality, we had this large data set with, uh, from Argon. And uh, yeah, so the way uh, they approach it, I mean, uh, so they just use PCA actually to identify the main components. Yeah, so that was like through PCA, so yeah. But I think it doesn't, this definitely probably doesn't scale well, and that's one of the, uh, it's definitely cursed, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the other uh, uh, problem that I mentioned was the detection of critical transitions for uh, multi-scale uh, SDEs. Uh, so we are looking at this kind of uh, slow, fast uh, SDEs. Uh, for example, the stochastic von der Poel. Uh, and so, uh, so there, are, um, there are two ways uh, that we approach it. One of them is by, to look at, uh, by looking at the MMD. Uh, and, then, uh, so the, and then we proved actually the MMD is maximal at the critical transition for this kind of, of SDE. So we look, we just like take sliding window, we divide it into two parts, and then we compute the MMD between the first and the second part. And then we proved that for this kind of SDEs, the MMD is maximal at the critical transitions. Uh, the second uh, approach is to, uh, is to also about learning kernels, uh, but it's like micro local uh, kernel design. We start with very small, over sm very small intervals, and then uh, we integrate. So there is this method of kernel mode decomposition that was introduced, uh, uh, I think, two, uh, two years ago by one of the co-authors. Uh, and then uh, we extended it. Uh, by, so here it was like based on this uh, Gabor wavelet, but then we uh, extended it a little bit to, uh, to more general patterns. By, uh, so we still didn't call it anything, but maybe something like extended kernel mode decomposition, where we are generalizing it to, to, uh, to uh, patterns that show in, uh, in some systems with critical transitions. So we, uh, this would be uh, the, the feature, and then this is how you construct the, 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 the local kernel. And then the larger kernel would be something like the, the following uh, triple integral over different parameters in the previous kernel. 
So for example, for stochastic von der Poel, one of the patterns that repeats is the, is the following, uh, has the following shape. And uh, yeah, so the common starting point is to start with the, with the following red kernel, but then by modifying it, so you see uh, it's learning in a way the, the critical transition. So you see there is a sharp uh, uh, shape in the, in the new kernel. And so here, one of the questions that we have been discussing with Iran is about how to learn a noise in the random uh, dynamical system. So here, for in this case, for this uh, Iran lamp, uh, sorry, not Iran lamp, but uh, SDE's uh, wonderful, uh, stochastic wonderful. So this is the reconstruction of the system. So the blue is the true and the orange is the reconstruction. And here we uh, you have this separation between the true signal and, uh, and the noise. And, uh, and then we, uh, so one of the goals here is also to try to, uh, to extract an early warning signal. So we define the energy of a sliding window as, as follows. And uh, so KT is the, is the constructed kernel. So we discretize the, the integrals. And then we have this, uh, the following sum. And <coughs> so what we notice, for example, for the case of uh, stochastic von der Poel, is by playing on the variance of the, of the Gaussian, uh, we could eventually uh, uh, have an early warning signal. So, for, so the top left for a small alpha, small variance, you see it, it matches. Uh, so that's the energy is the, uh, is the red one. And then for, to increase it to zero one, you see it's like a slight increase and then decrease. And then if, but if it's too big, then it's, it's too high and then it will include uh, many, uh, uh, many bumps. So one of the things will be to just find a relatively uh, good early warning signal for, the, for this kind of systems. Uh, yeah, then center manifold approximation. So I think Bogdan talked about it before. So here we had uh, something similar where we are uh, looking at kernel approximation for, uh, for center manifolds. Uh, so the goal is to, to solve the PDE uh, using kernel methods. Uh, so I'm going to go quickly over this. I mean, this is with the, so here we'll be using the property of reproducing, reproducing derivatives because we need to, uh, to impose uh, certain uh, conditions at, at the origin. And we also have uh, a version. So this is like for this are different results. So, oops. Uh, these are like different results for uh, numerics. But we also have a database version of the center manifold theorem. Uh, and uh, so we show that under certain conditions, we can always prove that there is a, a kernel where we have a some flexibility of the origin of the full order system implies the, uh, the stability properties of the reduced order system. Uh, yeah, then construction of Lyapunov uh, function. So we also have a uh, kernel method, kernel approach to, to solve uh, the PDE of Lyapunov functions. So uh, basically we use the following on that and uh, we construct Lyapunov functions by solving the PDE. Uh, and uh, so we also have proofs so here, this is like Peter Giesel has some results with, uh, with Vendland on when we now the right-hand side here, we, uh, we approximate the right-hand side, and then we also have uh, some uh, results uh, to prove that if we have a Lyapunov function for the approximation, then it will be a Lyapunov function for the original system, and same for the 2D system. I mean, we have uh, some, some results for the this following 2D system. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just running out of time, so I'm just going to conclude. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So wait. Yeah. Okay. So conclusion is that we use kernel flows to approximate uh, chaotic dynamic systems. We have different versions of kernel flows, and then we applied it for different problems. So we use also the maximum mean discrepancy and the extended kernel mode decomposition to detect uh, critical transitions for some uh, toy models and SDEs. And so these are things I didn't talk about, where we are talking about control systems uh, for SDEs. Uh, so we yeah. So. Uh, so we have uh, some work on estimating the certain resolution of the focal plank equation, but also on learning SDEs, but that was a work that was presented by Matthew in the, in the poster session. And we also talked about uh, database approach for the construction of Lyapunov functions and the center manifold uh, approximation, and, and also a database version of the center manifold theorem. And uh, so as I mentioned here, the argument is uh, more of an inductive argument where we want to show that RKHS are good uh, mathematical framework for the interface between machine learning and dynamical systems. So all these results, I'm mean, collectively argue that working in RKHS offers tools for uh, database theory of nonlinear dynamical systems. So there are definitely a lot of uh, open problems, uh, especially 
uh, for higher dimensional systems like a problem of scaling and also uh, SDEs and random dynamical systems. So here I see a good uh, link with uh, what Terry Lyons was talking about, like the link between signatures and kernels. So that could be a good way to, to deal with random dynamical systems in general. And uh, yeah, and that's it. You said these are the references. And uh, thanks for your attention. And again, thanks all for, for coming. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um.